What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, cheesy, briskety, smoky, smoked brisket mac and cheese. Coming up! If you know me personally, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of mac and cheese. First of all, I think it's kind of boring, you know? It's just noodles in a cheese sauce. But more than that, back in the day when I was a full-time pit master at Leroy and Lewis, I built the smokehouse, I built the smokers inside of the smokehouse, I was breaking down whole animals, making great barbecue, custom sausages every week, and without fail, every day, someone would come up to the window and be like, bro, love the mac and cheese. I'm like, dude, that took me 10 minutes to make. I don't know, it always rubbed me the wrong way. But that being said, on this channel, smoked mac and cheese is one of the most requested things I've gotten in the comments down below. And being a man of the people, that's that's what we're gonna make today, and it is going to be delicious. This is some cheese. I've got some medium cheddar, some sharp cheddar, some Parmigiano Reggiano, some mozzarella, and some Gruyere. So the two cheddars, the mozzarella and the Gruyere are all getting smoked, Parmesan is not. And when it comes to smoking cheese, you've got several options. The main goal is to smoke this stuff low and slow and get enough smoke on this cheese without melting it. Because as you know, when you melt cheese, it separates into oils and milk solids, and we don't want that. It'll make a big mess. So we're trying to create some good smoke with as little heat as possible, and there are many ways to go about doing that. One option would be using this guy. This is a little cold smoke generator that you fill up with sawdust and light on one end, and it'll slowly burn, producing very little heat and a whole bunch of good smoke. Another option would be the old smoke tube here. You fill this up with wood pellets. Again, you light it on one end, it kind of burns like a cigar, producing a nice amount of smoke. That would work very well, but I don't have any wood pellets on hand. Both of those options work really well because you can put it in any cooker you've got. You know, you can pop that in a gas grill, mini chud box, on a smoker, in a cardboard box. It'll get the job done. But today we're going to do it on the offset smoker the same way I do sausages. So I'm going to start a really small fire in that fire box, put one big dense log on there, let it smolder away, giving us a whole bunch of smoke with as little heat as possible. So that being said, let's fire up the pit. <laughs> Now it's a pretty doom and gloom day here in Austin, Texas today, and I've been waiting for a day like this for a while because it's only about 85 degrees outside, which is a great change of pace. And something to look for because we really don't want this cheese to get too hot. This is a great thing to do in the winter months. Oh, there's a snake in my boot. Huh? Anywho, let's get this cheese on the pit. To make sure this cheese stays as cold as possible, I'm gonna go in with a foil pan full of some ice. And then on top we go with our beautiful cheese. Again, if you're anywhere other than Texas in the summer, the ice thing is probably not necessary, but can't hurt. So we're gonna keep this as low and as smoky as possible for the next three, four hours, and then we will check back in. Four hours later, let's check in. Oh my God, look at that mozzarella. It appears to have melted. Oh my goodness. That's not ideal, folks. This looked fine about an hour ago. You know, maybe mozzarella is just one of those two hour cold smoke situations. Definitely got a little too warm on that pit, but hey, I'm not too mad about it because this is going into mac and cheese. So we're gonna be shredding all this stuff up anyway. So off this comes into some vac seal bags. Into the fridge this goes overnight. I think overnight is gonna be just enough time to solidify this, let all that smoke penetrate and give us some nice cheese that's gonna be smoky enough to make our mac and cheese extra flavorful. So I will see y'all tomorrow. It is the next day, our cheese has been sufficiently chilled, and now it's time to talk about the next component of this dish, which is brisket. Because we're not just making a smoky mac and cheese, folks, we're making a smoky brisket mac and cheese. And we're gonna incorporate brisket in two different ways. What I've got here is a brisket from the last time I cooked a brisket. I believe this is from the five tips and tricks mini series about brisket I did a couple weeks back. So what I'm gonna do is take the fatty of this brisket, cut it up into little cubes that we're gonna mix in with the mac and cheese so we get that nice little briskety bite. But we're also gonna take the lean and make some brisket crumbles to go on top to replace the typical breadcrumbs because what doesn't sound good about that and to do that we need to bust out the meat grinder <sighs> through the meat grinder we go still looking good Beautiful. And this is honestly a great technique for using leftover barbecue whenever you're trying to mix it into like a fried rice or a boudin or something like that. You know, mix this in with your eggs in the morning. Pfft, yes, please. On the pit this goes. I got this pit rocking about 250, 275, and we're just gonna try and get some smoke on these, crisp them up a little bit, render down a little bit more fat, and add some wonderful flavor. Check back in, in a little bit. Next up, let's get our cheese shredded up. Oh, that smells heavenly. We got our sharp cheddar, our mild cheddar, our two goudas, and our smoky mozzarella. So I'm gonna go through and take the ends off of this gouda here. 
And depending on how smoky you want this cheese to be, really depends on how long you leave it in the vac seal in the fridge. You know, if you're trying to make a charcuterie plate or something like that, and you really want that smoke to penetrate deep into the cheese, you can leave it in the fridge for about a week. That would really give time for the smoke to make it all the way through. But again, we're making mac and cheese. I don't feel like waiting a whole week. And uh, I also don't want it to be overly smoky. So now it's time to shred this up. And because I'm feeling particularly lazy today, we're going through the old food processor with the little cheese grater attachment on there. We will start out with the mild cheddar. Ooh. That was satisfying. There you go, folks. Beautiful, home smoked, perfectly shredded cheese. And we repeat. Oh, when it comes to a cheese sauce for mac and cheese, traditionally it starts out with a roux, then some milk, turning it into a bechamel, and then some cheese, turning it into a Mornay sauce. But to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the traditional mac and cheese sauce. It's kind of bland, kind of gritty, kind of grainy. And the best mac and cheeses that I've had is more like mac and queso, to be honest. You can tell that it's full of Velveeta or American cheese, and it's just got that gooey, melty, stretchy deliciousness to it. So that's the approach we're gonna take today. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably can guess what's about to happen. That's right, folks, we're making our own Velveeta-style cheese sauce using all of our smoked cheese. Starting with a pot. First thing going in is a stick of butter, because why not? Once that is nicely melted, we're going in with some sodium citrate. And if you've seen my very first burger making episode where I made my own American cheese, this is a very similar process. But basically the sodium citrate is a salt derived from citrus fruits that has incredible emulsifying powers. That's what they use in American cheese to make it so the cheddar or the Kobe or whatever cheese they're using doesn't split apart into oils and milk solids when you melt it down. And that's why American cheese has such a nice melty quality to it. Next going in is some classic flavors you're gonna see in most mac and cheese sauces, including a small amount of some freshly grated nutmeg, a nice shot of some Dijon mustard, a little bit of some white pepper, and a shake of some cayenne. Why not? Give that a nice little mixy mixy. Now we're going in with one little quart here of some heavy cream. And the main difference between this sauce and the American cheese I made in the other video is the amount of liquid we're gonna be putting into this. For American cheese, I wanted the minimal amount of liquid, so when I put it in a mold, it would solidify into a sliceable cheese. But today we're going for a cheese sauce, so we're gonna keep the consistency pretty loose and pourable. Well, just gonna let this come up to a simmer. And now we go in with our cheese. Medium cheddar, some of our smoky sharp cheddar, some Gruyere, and some of our mozzarella. But mostly I think we're gonna keep this a pretty cheddar heavy mix. And we're just gonna melt this in until it comes up to a really nice consistency. And again, the amount of cheeses you add is completely up to you. If you wanna make this all cheddar, you could. If you wanted to make this all Gruyere. If I was gonna guess, I'd say this is probably gonna be about 60% cheddar, 30% Gruyere, and then 10% mozzarella. And once everything is fully melted, I'm gonna go in with this immersion blender here just to make sure everything is completely smooth. And at this stage, it's looking a little thick. So this is where we're gonna go in with our extra liquid. I got some milk here that we're gonna just keep drizzling in until this comes up to the perfect consistency. Oh, smells so good, tastes amazing, folks. And that is my version of a smoked cheese, mac and cheese sauce, beautiful. About three hours later, these brisky crumbles are coming off the pit and just looking so nice. I mean, just look at that, folks. Come on, this is a perfect addition to a baked potato. Smoky, briskety, it's beef breadcrumbs. Love it. So now all there's left to do is cook our noodles. In this stock pot here, I got about six quarts of water that we're gonna season with a nice healthy pinch of salt. Oh, and we're going in with our large macaroni noodles. Oh. Turn to full boil, cook for 10 to 12 minutes until tender. I'll see y'all in 10 to 12 minutes. 9.5 minutes later, these macaronis are fully cooked and coming out. Into a colander they go to drain off all the water. I'd stay one of these and it's kind of right at that al dente point where we want it. We don't want these fully cooked to mush at this point because we're gonna be cooking this a little bit more with that cheese sauce to make sure everything is nice and melty. So air on the side of undercooked at this stage. We've got all of our nudes in a bowl here. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our lovely cheese sauce and just look at that folks. Oh God, it's just so velvet. Velvety, so silky, so cheesy. So we're gonna just dump it. Ah, it's very hot. I gotta put on my little mitt. Have this on the stove top for just a bit to make sure it's nice and loose and pourable. In we go. Oh goodness. Oh yes, please. Oh, it's like a little volcano of cheese. And we're just gonna mix that up. We wanna add a little more cheese sauce than you think. We want it to be a little bit moist, a little bit on the juicy side, because those noodles are gonna absorb a lot of this cheese sauce. Oops, can't have too much cheese sauce, folks. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Macaroni in the pot, am I right? Oh, that's looking lovely. Next up, we're going in with some of our brisket chunks. Again, this is some cubes from the fatty end of the brisket that we cut up earlier, and we're just gonna mix 
Dixie's in for good measure, you know, because what doesn't look good about that? Am I right? Oh, goodness. Oh, yes, please. Just fill that bad Larry right on up. I gotta tell you, folks, the smells right now are out of control. Next up for the stretchiness factor, we're gonna go ahead and drop a couple of chunks of some mozzarella in here, just because that's the stringiest of all the cheeses, as well as an extra sprinkle of our smoked sharp cheddar. Just get these mozzarella chunks buried a little bit. And lastly, we're gonna top this with our brisket crumbles. I'm telling you folks, these things are a game changer. The amount of applications that this stuff could be used for is endless. And then to finish her off, we're gonna go on with some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Really lock in that crust. Oh God, folks, it's a cheese overload. No complaints on this end. Now onto the pit this goes for the next probably 20, 30 minutes. Rocking right around 300 degrees on this pit behind me. And that's just gonna make sure everything gets nice and melted and combined. The brisket gets heated up and then it'll be time to dive on in. Love it. And just like that, out of the smoker, this thing comes looking nice and bubbly, nice and cheesy. Got a little bit of cheese leakage on this side, but hey, happens. Ow. We're gonna let this rest down for a little bit and then we'll dive on in. Let's just grab a little corner, shall we? Ooh. I mean, come on, folks. Nice and cheesy. Got that nice string pull. Brisket on top. Oh, I gotta get a plate. It's so gooey. So cheesy. Oh, look at that string pull. Nothing wrong with that. I tell you what. You know, one of my biggest things about mac and cheese is I hate when it's dry. And this is definitely not dry. That is gooey and cheesy and looking absolutely fantastic. The brisket crust, folks. Come on. Let's see how this came out, shall we? Oh. That is ridiculous. It's beefy, it's smoky, it's rich, it's creamy. I mean, it's everything you want a mac and cheese to be. Just like, oh, the cheese pulls, the brisket on top. Mm. Mm -hmm. God, that is fantastic. That's so good. Mm. Honestly, the whole time I was worried that this was gonna be overly smoked with the smoked cheese and the brisket, finishing it on the smoker, but really it's quite subtle. Like the sharpness of the cheese is what I taste the most. And the fact that it's made with just sharp cheddar, mild cheddar and Gruyere gives this incredible flavor. So cheesy, so gooey, but it still has that nice creamy texture that you get from something made out of American cheese. This is decadent to say the least. Mm. The beefiness is strong. Mm. I'm gonna eat a lot of this off camera in shame. But before I go, I think it's time for the official taste test. Grab a little ball of mac and cheese here. Toss that in your deep fryer. How you doing? All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic smoked mac and cheese full of brisket made with cheese that you smoked yourself, turned into your very own smoky Velveeta cheese sauce studded with brisket topped with a beautiful brisket crumble. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. It is absolutely fantastic and probably the best barbecue mac and cheese I've ever had. And that being said, there are so many variations to this. You can throw some pulled pork in there, put some bacon bits on top. The world is endless when it comes to mac and cheese. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.